Hello and thanks for joining us for our late night newscast coming to you from Arirang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story tonight, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has proclaimed that his country is more than capable of defending itself in the event of a war started by the United States. He was giving a rare speech as part of mass celebrations in Pyongyang to mark 70 years of the country's ruling party. Kim Jong-un starts us off. North Korea held a massive military parade in Pyongyang on Saturday to mark the 70th anniversary of its ruling Workers' Party. It's been seen as the biggest military parade ever held there, broadcast live on its state-run Korean central television. Around 100,000 residents gathered at Pyongyang's Kim Il-sung Square to watch the parade as new advanced weaponry was displayed. Citing a South Korean official, media outlets in Seoul reported the North showed off its road mobile intercontinental ballistic missiles, known as the KN-08. The official was quoted as saying the tip of the 12,000-kilometer range missile appears to have been modified. He said further analysis is needed to determine whether the revision was made for the purpose of installing miniaturized nuclear warheads. Also, reports say KN-09 300mm artillery rockets were made public for the first time after repeatedly being test-fired last year off the EC. The KN-09, with a range of up to 200 kilometers, has the capability to reach South Korea's military headquarters in Kaerongdae, about a two-hour drive down south of capital, Seoul. In a rare move, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un delivered his first speech in three years during a military parade. He emphasized the importance of having a strong military in the face of U.S. threats. Kim, however, didn't mention the country's nuclear capabilities. Today's parade proudly shows our military might to the rest of the world. Our forces have been trained and refined over the past 70 years. We are ready to deal with any threat and attack by the United States. Throughout the parade, Kim Jong-un stood by his deputy Hwang byung seo North Korea's highest-ranking military official. To his left, Yu in san the fifth most powerful member of China's Politburo Standing Committee, Beijing's highest decision-making body. Kim and Yu held a one-on-one -on -one meeting before the parade. China-based China news agency reports that Yu emphasized the importance of a nuclear-free Korean peninsula and the resumption of the long-stall six-party talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea that involves the two Koreas, China, the U.S., Japan and Russia. This is the fifth military parade since Kim Jong-un came to power in late 2011, but the most lavish of all was some analysts in the South putting the price tax somewhere between 1 to 2 billion U.S. dollars. That is about a third of the reclusive state's annual budget and enough to feed everyone in North Korea for well over two years. Kim Jong, Arirang News. Now, South Korea has two new additions to UNESCO's documentary heritage list. They are a set of Confucian printing wood blocks and an over 30-year-old local TV broadcast that re reunited families separated by the Korean War. The wood blocks are comprised of more than 64,000 pages of 700 18 kinds of books written by Confucian scholars during the Joseon dynasty when the ideology served as the ruling philosophy. The TV broadcast, Finding Dispersed Families, aired by local broadcaster KBS in 1983, was recognized for the way it captured the sorrow and the joy of North and South Koreans being reunited after so many decades apart. Outside of Korea, Records related to the 1937 Nanjing Massacre were inscribed on the UNESCO Memory of the World International Register. They document the Japanese Army's rampage, during which it killed up to 300,000 Chinese men, women and children. UNESCO, however, did not recognize archives on Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of women, for which China had also sought inscription. Korea's finance minister has called for the creation of an international financial safety net to prevent other global financial crises. In a written speech submitted during the International Monetary Fund and World Bank meetings that uh, are ongoing in Peru, Che Gyeong-hwan said that considering global financial markets are highly connected, 
safety mechanisms like multilateral currency swap deals are needed to ensure stability. He also identified increased volatility in emerging markets as a key risk factor. Bank of Korea Governor Lee j u y o l is also in Lima for those meetings. The central bank chief says the Korean economy grew over 1% in the third quarter thanks to steadily recovering domestic demand. Quarterly economic growth has been stuck below 1% since the second quarter of 2014. The Bank of Korea will release its revised economic outlook for this year on Thursday. The International Monetary Fund says the South Korean economy is being stifled by weak corporate activity and frail consumer sentiment. Releasing its revised economic outlook report for the Asia-Pacific region on Saturday, the IMF cited those reasons for why it cut the growth outlook for South Korea for this year to 2.7%. The IMF added that it expects growth of 3.2% for 2016. It says the South Korean economy will benefit from lower commodity prices. and monetary easing policies. Now, Turkey's government says at least 86 people have been killed and 186 injured after two explosions at a peace rally in Ankara. Now, thousands of people had gathered on Saturday calling for an end to violence between Kurdish separatist group PKK and Turkish security forces when the devices uh, went off. You're looking at amateur video there that captures The moment the bombs exploded, people fleeing the scene and those injured uh, lying on the ground soaked in blood. Also, the death toll has risen to at least 86 within the last few moments or, or so ago. It was at around 30 before. Now, Turkey's interior ministry says it was a terror attack and is looking into whether a suicide bomber was involved. No one as yet has taken responsibility for the attack. The U.S. Embassy in Ankara has condemned the bombing, saying everyone should stand united against terror. U.S. officials say Russia has agreed to enter into talks aimed at ensuring the two countries' forces avoid accidental clashes while conducting airstrikes over Syria. The Pentagon says the talks are likely to take place as soon as this weekend. The discussions will likely focus on how much distance there should be between U.S. and Russian jets. and also on using common radio frequencies for distress calls. Now, Moscow says it's targeting the Islamic State militant group in Syria, but the U.S. and its allies have accused Russia of bombing anti-Assad rebel groups. In another development, Washington has announced that it is ending its training program for new Syrian rebel forces and instead uh, shifting its focus to providing equipment and weapons to existing Forces. The 500 million US dollar project was supposed to train 20,000 fighters over the next 18 months. Now, with Korea's advancements in digital technology, more and more retailers are using a feature, and it's called augmented reality, and it's to make their products stand out to their customers. Now, o s e a n takes us shopping. Trying on clothes in the fitting room can be a hassle when you're shopping. But inside the store in Karosuge, a trendy shopping zone in Seoul, customers can try on any piece of clothing within a second. By walking in front of a magic mirror, customers can see their reflections wearing the item of choice. They can even move around and look at individual stitches on the clothes. Behind this virtual experience is a technology called augmented reality, which combines physical objects with digital graphics or information. The technology is becoming more and more commercialized in Korea, popping up in fast food and convenience stores. While eating on the go, customers can see themselves dancing with celebrities and even strike a pose for a photo. Some convenience stores allow a change of scenery, with virtual wall displays that even cast shadows on the floor. I don't feel like I'm in a convenience store. It's a refreshing and tasteful experience. And at this ice cream franchise, customers scan the logo on an ice cream box and animated characters pop out onto the screen, introducing brand new flavors. Because we use animations or graphics based on physical products to deliver information to our customers, they become more interested and participate more. Creating a fun and vivid shopping experience, augmented reality is on its way to becoming a new commercial trend in Korea. Oh Seung, Arirang News.
Now imagine seeing in person some of the ancient artifacts that you could once only see in school textbooks. Korea is now hosting a number of art exhibitions and they showcase prized Asian relics, some of which are 2,000 years old. Won Jeon tells us more. This is the Puncheong flat bottle, also known as number 179 of Korea's national treasure. It's currently on display at the Shinza branch of Horin Museum in Seoul as part of a special exhibition featuring a collection of roughly 70 ancient ceramics from the Joseon era. Organizers say more than half of the collection has never been revealed to the public. This exhibition is a rare opportunity for people to see all the flat bottles in one place. They'll get to see the entire process of how three different types of flat bottles are made. From the earth tone Puncheong bottles to more decorative white porcelain ones, you can check out the evolution of Korean flat bottles at this museum until October 31st. Over at the Seoul Baekje Museum in eastern Seoul, ancient Chinese relics have arrived in Korea for a special exchange exhibition. It features some 270 artifacts from Chang'an, Riyang, and Ye, the areas that used to be major capitals during China's southern and northern dynasties. Here, visitors will also get a chance to compare the historical relics to the ones found in Korea's ancient capital of Baekje during the same period. You'll get to see how the ancient Chinese people went from believing in a very rich afterlife to a more humble setting through relics found in their tombs. The museum is also offering free lectures on the site to help visitors understand the historical meanings behind the relics. The exhibition will stay in Korea until December 6. Won ji Arirang News. Now, finally, taking a brief look at the weekend weather. And uh, most of the patches of light rain across the central region have cleared now. It's going to feel cold tonight, though. The low is going to drop to just 6 degrees Celsius in Seoul. It will also be pretty cool on Sunday. The afternoon high is only going to top out at 15 degrees Celsius in the capital under cloudy skies. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.